Next up, uh, this is national news. This will be tomorrow when this airs. Uh, so March 10th, Sunday at 6 p.m. at the uh, Urban Abbey Coffee off 10th and Jackson Street in Omaha, Nebraska. If anyone wanted to go down and check it out, I was just throwing the address out there. Uh, they will be featuring a drag show. And I, I, I've made it clear. I don't give a fuck what you guys do. You want to go to a drag show? I don't see the appeal to it, but go off. It, it, I guess somebody... Someone finds it fun, right? Here's where I draw the line, though. This coffee shop is uh, getting a six-year-old drag drag queen. Six-year-old drag queen from Omaha is going to be performing there. A six-year-old. Brought to you by uh, Omaha's Heartland Pride. Lulu Lovely Twirls is the name of the drag queen. Or would this be a drag princess? <laughs> this shouldn't even be a question that you're having to ask I know. right now. This is the issue. Now, I, I, I've heard uh, this hasn't been published or confirmed, but I know some people. I mean, because when you work in inter- entertainment long enough, you're going to everything kind of starts to merge. I know people that are involved in the drag community. Well, people being one person. And evidently, there was a bomb threat called into this place. Now, that's not cool. That's dumb. Don't do not do that. When you make a bomb threat call, the feds, number one, the feds immediately get involved because that's domestic terrorism, right? That's a terroristic threat. So when you make a bomb threat, immediately the feds are going to get involved. They're going to find you. You think you blocked your number? Use it. They're going to find out who you are, especially in Biden's America. And it's a threat against an LGBTQ 4K HD TV thing. They're going to find you. Don't do that. Don't do that. I promise you. I am, I am just as frustrated by this as you are. I'm just as outraged about this as you are. I promise you. But calling it a bomb threat is counterproductive. It's counterproductive. I promise you there are other ways to go about dealing with this. Other ways that don't take your children's father or your wife's husband or your, your your best friend's best friend, your parents' son from them. There are other ways to go about doing this. That was me knocking my cup over. There are other ways to go about doing this than getting the feds involved. And if you don't care about all that, well, obviously you care about being on the right side of history because you're rightfully outraged by this. Calling in a bomb threat makes us look like Al-Qaeda. And it adds sympathy to the other side of this. To the people, look at these bullies. They're just these terrorists. They want to threaten us with bombs. All we want to do is watch a six-year-old strip while we throw dollar bills at him. What's wrong with them? It makes us look like the bad guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, this is a supposed Christian coffee house. Christian coffee house. Um... Here's their, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. They're one of those like woke churches, though, right? We, we need Justin Healy on to give his opinion on woke churches. God, no. No? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because it'd be a f- four hour episode. It would be, I think, more than four hours. <laughs> well, Justin Healy doesn't like any religious sect that's not. Catholic, so he would be. To, this is why you got to convert to Catholicism, man. So this is a uh, Reverend Deborah McKnight, right? She's apparently a doctor. I don't fucking know. Um, probably in the same sense that Jill Biden is. She is the founding pastor of Urban Abbey. She's passionate, of course. It's a fat white bitch. She is passionate about connecting with people and helping them grow in their faith an advocate for social justice, women's rights, and the LGBTQ uh, 4K HD TV BLT plus exclamation point infinity sign community. She seeks to heal the wounds created by conservative Christianity. Her vivacious, warm personality fuels her ability to influence people in positive and healthy ways. You know what I noticed about that? Well, I got a question for you. You grew up in the church, Catholic church, but it's all kind of the same, right? What's the priest or the pastor or whatever? What's their number one job supposed to be? Who are they supposed to speak on behalf of? God. God. Let me read that again. Is that the correct answer? Yeah, they're supposed to advocate on behalf of God. 
an advocate for social justice, women's rights, and the LGBTQ plus community. Not God? Really? Hmm. Okay. That, that's, that's a little weird. It's a little odd. No, I don't have a problem. I know I'm going to be in the minority on this. I know my audience is going to scream at me, but this is why we respect each other. I don't have a problem with churches wanting to be more um, welcoming to gay people, but you can do that, believe it or not, without six-year-old drag performers performing at your church. That is entirely possible. Do you know that? I did not know that. Do you know you can do that? You can do that. They always clap back. They're always like, well, it's just drag. Drag is not inherently sexual, which is bullshit. You're dancing seductively in ridiculous clothing, sometimes while taking clothing off, which is what the kid does in his act. There's, I, I watched the Vice documentary about it. Well, people throw money at you. That, that's kind of sexual. But let, let me humor him for a second. Let's pretend it's not sexual, for argument's sake. Let's say that what the kid is doing is no different, like they like to say, than ballet or interpretive dance. So he's just gay, right? But let's just say that. For, for, let's pretend for a second. Let me ask you a question. Would you be comfortable with adults who have no relation to the child? They're not the parent. They're not the, the, the aunt or uncle. Not a, a family friend, grandparent, nothing like that. Just random adults that wanted to hop in for fun. Would you be comfortable with those adults going and watching random children's ballet recitals? Or would you have some questions about them? So even if it is no different than ballet or whatever other form of dance, don't you think it's a little weird that random adults would go out of their way and pay money to see a kid dance, period? And I wouldn't even stop at dance. I mean, if you're going to fifth grade football games, baseball game, basketball, soccer, whatever, any type of, of, of event that involves children and you don't have any ties to it, you don't know anyone playing, you don't know any of the parents, I'm not comfortable with that either. Stay the fuck away from people's kids. You want to watch a sport so bad, there's plenty you can watch on TV. There's high school, pro, college games all over the state. Go there. Stay the fuck away from people's kids. Am I out of line on this? No, not at all. Is it, is it not weird to want to watch someone else's kid that you have no connection to dance, whether it's sexual or not? Is that not a weird thing? Should those people not be put on lists? I, no, I agree. I No, I agree. It's just, yeah, no, I like how you made the comparison to just sports yeah, it's weird either way in general yeah i don't care if it's a hobby if it's not sexual at all it's, it's still weird that you want to go that, that why would someone want to go watch somebody else's kid dance and the parents are just okay with this they have no problem i think well i watched the vice documentary on this kid because i wanted to get somewhat educated about it before i talked about it on the show and then i think the dad might be coming out through his son <laughs> i think that that's my theory here and i i did watch it and they were talking to the mom, and they showed the kid, it was like three at the time, three or four, drag. And was, of course, fascinated by it. It's loud music and crazy dancing and bright colors, like any three-year-old would be, right? Any kid would be, right, yeah. Right, by that. So, they asked the kid, do you want, or the mom admits in the Vice documentary, supposedly the kid just chose this lifestyle on his own, but the mom asked the kid, would you want to wear a dress someday? When you ask a fucking three-year-old that question, what do you think? They're, they're going to say yes. Their parents asked them. I want to impress mom and dad. Of course I do. You could ask if he wanted to be a dinosaur and he'd say yes. Do you want to try crystal meth someday? Yeah. Well, yeah. And if it's something that he was intrigued by because of the mm -hmm. music and the lights and everything, then yeah, he's going to want to. Yeah. He's going to want to do that because. Yeah. He's three. Yeah. He doesn't know any better. Yeah. I'll tell you, I remember when I was a kid, my mom asked me, because my cousin used to wrestle. My parents asked me, do you want to wrestle? And I did not want to wrestle, but I said yes, because that's what my parents asked me if I wanted to do, and I fucking hated it. Kids will tell you yes, if you're the parent, because they feel like... 
in a weird way, when you ask a young kid a question, you're basically, in their mind, you're just telling them. It's like when your boss goes, hey, could I get you to come in? Uh, so-and-so canceled on their shift. He's not really asking you, right? It's more or less like, hey, come on in. Kind of the same thing. Maybe I'm weird. I don't know. I'm just disturbed by all this. Again, that is a March 10th, Sunday, 6 p.m. at the Urban Abbey Coffee Center in Omaha in the Old Market off 10th and Jackson Street. We might go down there and do some man on the street stuff. I just want to interview people, document. Should we go? We, I think we should. Would you Would you hold the camera? We'll see. I'm going to need someone to. And we're going to interview people. I mean, we might as well. What else are we going to do on a Sunday? It's yeah. a big event going on. I just want to go down there and see. I'm just, I just want to see what's going on. We're not on going to the, the show. We'll no. go on the, I want to see the protests if there's yeah. anything going on around yeah, it. I want yeah, to see if there's anything going on around there. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I think, I think we'll go down there. We might be down there. Maybe we'll air it on like Friday or something. Um, the, the following Friday. But yeah, so maybe you'll, maybe you'll bump into us down there. Who knows? Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to click the link in the description to get the full episode on Rumble. If you prefer to listen along, you can actually get us on Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. You can also go to www.outlawstreamers.com to learn more about not just my show, but tons of other great shows and all the exciting projects they have coming up. Follow my socials at Caleb Isn't Funny on Twitter and Instagram, at Caleb Salvatore Comedy on the Chinese spy app that is TikTok, and be sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks, and we'll see you every Saturday for brand new episodes of That's Based. Peace.